Japanese Immigrant Nationalism, the Issei and the Sino-Japanese War, 1937-1941, by Yuji Ichioka, published in California History, Fall 1990, Part 2. By July 1938, Los Angeles Council Ota Ichiro felt that Japanese immigrant nationalism had gotten out of control. In his opinion, groups were competing wildly with each other to see who could raise the most money. They solicited openly in public and publicized the results of fundraising drives in the local Japanese language newspaper. Ota singled out the Heimushakai and Hokukukai, yet another patriotic body, for using strong arm tactics to coerce people into making donations. Engaging so conspicuously in pro-Japanese activities, he feared, would alarm the American public. Mindful of possible adverse repercussions, Ota warned the Issei leaders of the dangers involved, but much to his dismay, zealous individuals and groups refused to heed his admonition. Thus, Ota advised the foreign ministry to take measures to curb or dampen the excess of patriotic ardor of the Issei. In a revealing report dated July 10, 1938, he recommended to Tokyo that the prime minister or the foreign minister should issue a statement to the effect that, while it was laudable for overseas Japanese to contribute money to Japan's war efforts, it was by far better for them to use such funds to educate the citizens of the country in which they resided about Japan's policy. If such a statement were aired over shortwave radio or released through the Domei News Agency, Ota believed that it would have a salutary effect. He assumed that the Issei, who had refused to heed his words, would abide by the words of the prime minister or the foreign minister. Also reporting that overzealous patriotism had emerged in his jurisdiction, Council Shiozaki endorsed Ota's recommendation. Inasmuch as Shiozaki's re endorsement came right after he had proposed that every Issei donate a dollar to families who had lost men in combat, this was somewhat ironic, an irony that did not escape the attention of later critics of Council Shiozaki and Council Ota. Ota did not receive an instant reply from Tokyo. Several weeks later, he reiterated his recommendation because of continuing patriotic excesses in Southern California. Ultimately, the Japanese Foreign Ministry released a statement on August 9, 1938, through the Domei News Agency. Instead of being announced by the Prime Minister or Foreign Minister, it was issued in the name of Kowai Tatsuo, the Information Section Chief of the Foreign Ministry. Kawai began by cautioning overseas Japanese about excessive and competitive fundraising campaigns. Raising national defense and war relief funds was commendable, he pointed out, but it was not the only way of being patriotic. Overseas Japanese were in a position to educate foreigners about the Japanese side of the Sino-Japanese conflict. The Japanese in America in particular were situated to inform Americans about the war. If the Issei dedicated themselves to this educational task, Kawai assured them, they would be acting as true patriots. Indeed, they would be contributing toward the preservation of good Japanese-American relations, which was more important than the remission of national defense and war relief funds. Interestingly enough, the foreign ministry released Kawai's opinions as informal remarks, rather than as an official statement of policy. In all likelihood, Tokyo adopted this low-key tactful approach in order to unduly antagonize overseas Japanese. As soon as the statement was released, many immigrants assailed it as an affront to overseas Japanese. The Nichibe Shimbun of San Francisco ran a series of protest letters from its readers. One reader stated that every Issei who had read the letter, quote, felt a state sense of indignation, unquote, and urged everyone to disregard Kawai's voice. A noted Issei poet, Yusa Keizo of Guadalupe, pointed out with barbed sarcasm the irony of Kawai's statement, in the light of Consul Shiozaki's appeal to the Issei to contribute war relief funds. The harshest and most vocal critic was Fuji Issei, a publisher and editor of the Kashu Mainichi of Los Angeles. Enraged by the statement, Fuji minced no words in lashing out at it and at Consul Ota. Cantankerous and opinionated by nature, Fuji had championed the patriotic activities of the Issei from the very beginning, and he had been critical of Ota's predecessor, Consul Hori Koichi, who, in his opinion, had given only lukewarm support to the drive to collect funds for military aircraft. Fuji correctly surmised that Ota had filed a report to Tokyo recommending that the statement be issued. In bitter diatribes in his daily column, Fuji heaped abuse on Ota, calling him an arrogant, ignorant, and insensitive elitist, 
who was incapable of fathoming the motives of the common Issei. And he sternly rebuked Ota for having insulted them in an unforgivable manner. According to Fuji, the Issei donated money and collected Imon Bukuro because of their sincere generosity, not for selfish motives. The Issei were profoundly grateful for the sacrifices the Japanese soldiers were making on the battlefield. They truly grieved for the families who had lost loved ones, and they possessed an undying love of Japan, their mother country.